Courtney, go sit down. Phrases and clauses, not Santa Claus. No, not Santa Claus. There's only one Santa Claus, so it would be correct. All right, if you guys would please take out your uh, your information for phrases and clauses that we were working on before we did map testing on Tuesday. Um, yeah, you can just take, copy it out, stuff down for right now. New stuff. There's paper in the in the bin. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, on Tuesday. We started talking about phrases and clauses. Uh, uh, sorry, before we get to uh, Our next map test, I just checked the schedule. Our next map test is next Tuesday. Yes, I, it's, on, it's on the official schedule. This is the official one that I was given um, that I should have checked before when I made out my plan. Map test, map, is on Tuesday, September 17th. Okay? Mr. Bitter, is this your drink? It is not mine. Somebody left it in my class. Not okay. mine. <laughs> Found it so, under my uh, desk this morning. Should I write this in the journal or? I would write them in whatever notebook you were writing in your your prepositional phrases in. Or I'm sorry, your your regular phrases in before. We looked at all of these, I think, but I just want to go over them really quickly as just sort of a reminder as to where we left off. Uh, I think it's helpful to go through reminders like this. So we're just going to go through these as a reminder of where we left off. Right. Um, we talked about the different types of phrases. That uh, their basic function is to add more information. Oh, and the, that's because the network thing was down, but it shouldn't be down anymore. Okay, let's see if that's. Plus, that hasn't been affected on my laptop so far today, so I don't know why this is a network. All right, I guess we just won't use that. That's fine. All right, so we talked about we talked about the different types of phrases. Um, their basic function is to add more information, but in doing so, they can act as other parts of speech. So we talked about how noun phrases act as nouns. Um, we gave the example of a 98-year-old lady. It's a phrase, it's a group of words, but it makes up the noun of that sentence. It's the subject of that sentence also. Um, it is who or what the sentence is about, right? And then we talked about, the next one was verbals. We talked about verbals. We did cover this last on Tuesday, right? Yeah. yeah. All right, I want to make sure that we did talk about this, because I thought we did. I thought we made it this far. I know we did in my other class. I thought we made it this far in the other class. Um, the other one was verbal phrases include the main verb in a sentence of a sentence uh, and the words that help modify that that verb. So in this section, we talked about Matilda couldn't decide whether she would like to run long distances or short distances. So you have a lot there. It's a lot in a verbal phrase. It'd be a lot of information. Next one, verbal phrases can act as nouns. So sometimes you have verbal phrases that act as main verbs. Sometimes they act as nouns, which can, which can get confusing. Because if you look at that sentence that we have there, running in races of all sorts is something that Matilda would always volunteer to do. If it wasn't underlined and I asked you what the main verb of that sentence was, what would you say it was? Stop looking at it. If I asked you what the main verb of that sentence is, what would you say? Ran, okay. Wait, ran is something in that sentence. Well, running is in that sentence. 
Running is in the sentence. So how many of you would say, if I asked you, if it wasn't underlined, and I asked you what the main verb of that sentence was, how many of you would, how many of you would say it's running? The main verb of that sentence is running. But in this case, running in races, even just the word running is a noun. It's part of a verbal phrase that makes up a noun. Running in races of all sorts. It's not a verb, it's the thing that she likes to do. So in this case, it becomes a thing. It is a noun. So it can get a little confusing. Adjective phrases help modify nouns. So we have an entire adjective phrase that helps modify a noun. In this case, we have worn, rugged from a long trek is an adjective phrase, and it modifies what noun? What noun does worn, rugged from the long trek modify? Jalen? The long trek? No. Worn, rugged from the long trek. That's a whole adjective phrase, and that one phrase modifies one word. Shoes, exactly. What was what was worn rugged? The shoes were. So that adjective phrase modifies just one word, and that one word is shoes. Last one. Adverb phrases, just like adjective phrases, modify things. In this case, it modifies a verb, an adjective, or other adverbs. In this particular case, it's modifying a verb. So we look at our example. One time, Matilda ran through five states. So through five states is an adverb phrase. It modifies one particular verb. Can anybody tell me what that one particular verb is? Enrique? States? No. Nope. States isn't a verb, it's a noun. And it's part of the yeah. adverb phrase. So through five states, that phrase modifies a particular verb. Brooke? Ran. Ran, correct. Ran. Ran is your main verb. Through five states mo modifies ran. All right, so now we're on to something new, because I think that's as far as we went on Tuesday. So we've talked about what a phrase is. What, is, what a phrase is. So what's a clause? We know what a phrase is. What's a clause? Let's see if the eraser oh, sorry. All right, a phrase. A phrase is a group of words having both a subject and a predicate. So remember when we talked about a, a phrase, a phrase is a group of words that don't have either a subject or a predicate. They're missing one of or both. They're missing one of or both. Well, a clause is one that is a, is a group of words that has both. That has both. So what's another name for a clause? What, what's something else that we could call a clause? What? Maybe you have an idea. No? Yeah. Um, it's kind of like a sentence because you need a subject and a predicate for a sentence. Right. It's kind of like a sentence. A sentence needs a subject and a predicate. A clause is also going to have a subject and a predicate. So a sentence is a type of clause. A sentence is a type of clause. That okay? You use the erasers and stuff, but that's okay. <sighs> Don't you just love technology sometimes? All right, let's see. Let's see if we can actually pull it. I might have. Um, let's see here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull the first one up and see if we can actually even do it. Let's see if we go. Oh, it'll work. It'll work. All right, sweet. Yay. Cool. So now we have some examples of clauses. Click on each star and pull it out in the empty area to see an example of a clause. Uh, Zach, go ahead and pull one out. Pull out your clause and then read it to the class, please. Because you may be going. Because you may be going. Right? Doesn't sound like a false sentence. Sounds kind of weird, like it's missing something. But it does have a subject and predicate. Because you may be right. Courtney, go ahead and pull out another one. Oh, 
What a fluffy kitten, great kitten ran. I was supposed to read it. I know. So read what it. What a fluffy kitten, great kitten. Thank you. He's brave. What a fluffy gray kitten ran. Once again, it doesn't seem quite right, like it's missing something, right? It feels like it's missing something. But it does have a subject, it does have a predicate, right? Kevin, go ahead and move on. Oh, no, I didn't get a While we were eating. Still kind of feels like it's missing something, but it does have a subject and a predicate. All right, uh, Frick, go ahead. I think you're kind of late on that hand raising. No matter how hard I tried. Okay. John, go grab one. Hey. Ah. Even though I ate. Even though I ate. <laughs> Jacqueline, go grab one. They could—they are missing something. Sometimes it feels like they're missing something. And what they are missing really are some phrases. They need some phrases added to it to make them sound a little bit better. Technically, they are current. They are closet. Because I left. Because I left. Brooke. Ever since I met him. Ever since I met him. Enrique, go grab one. Subject of this sentence. It. it was extremely deadly. Right. It. it. What's the verb? Uh, extremely deadly? No. So, 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 so. Not deadly. Was. Yeah. Was. Was. Was the verb. It was. First, okay, first, look at deadly. <laughs> what letters does deadly end with? L-Y. 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 What kind of words end in L-Y? Adverbs. Adverbs, not verbs. I didn't get that. Well, what kind of, what does extremely end in? L-Y. L-Y. What kind of word is ending in L-Y? Adverbs. Adverbs. So if this is an adverb and this is an adverb and this is our subject, the only thing that's left for the verb is what? Those. All right. Uh, ever since I met him, what is our subject? I. Oh. Yeah. Not him. That him is the direct object. I. I. And what is the verb? Met. Met. That's what it is. 
So who or what is the subject about? Some sentences about I and what did I do? I met. Who did I meet? Yeah. Uh, while we were eating, what is the subject of that sentence? While we were eating. Jax. We. we. And what did we do to find the verb? We. Uh, here we actually have a verb phrase, which is we're eating. We were eating. It's both. It's a verb phrase. We, we were eating. It's a helping verb. We're, in this case, is a helping verb. Helping uh, when a fluffy gray kitten ran, what is our subject? Subject. Party. Kitten, right? Simple subject is kitten, right? Just kitten. And what did our kitten do? Ran. What did our kitten do? Brayden, what did our kitten do? He ran, thank you. Away. Okay, so we kind of got the idea, right? All of these clauses, a clause is going to have a subject and a predicate. So it's going to have a subject and at least a verb. And that's one of the ways that we tell that they are clauses. That's going to drive me nuts. I'm trying to fix that. What are we doing here? Great. <coughs> Okay, so we have two main types of clauses. Santa and Mrs. No, that's not <laughs> two main types of clauses. Independent and dependent. So can be set up Well, we all know that we all know that Mrs. Clause is very dependent upon Mr. Clause. So we have two types of clauses, independent and dependent. Independent clauses. Independent clauses can stand alone as complete sentences. They can stand alone as complete sentences. They are independent. They need nothing to be a complete sentence. They're independent. They can stand alone. Notice, look at a little stick figure guy. The little stick figure guy is all by himself, right? He doesn't need anybody. He's a loner. He's so cool. <laughs> I want to be like Mr. Tiffany. He's a wolf pack of one. Yeah. yeah. He needs, he needs, he is, he knows what the box says. He's in, he's independent. He knows. He's like, yeah. He can stand alone as a complete sentence. Right? Independent. What? They can pull it up. What does the box say? All right. A dependent clause, on the other hand, a dependent clause is sort of like a little baby. It's dependent on something. It can't stand alone, right? I have my, these are, this would be perfectly represented in my children. My son is totally an independent clause. He can stand on his own. He walks on his own. He can get up. He moves around. He's all over the place. Totally, uh, when it comes to walking and moving around, independent. He doesn't need any help. Now my daughter, on the other hand, my daughter, on the other hand, um, she's just not quite strong. If she's at home and she doesn't have shoes on, she can walk and move around for a little bit by herself. But when she can get her shoes on, and they're a little bit heavier, and she's not used to them, and she is much more dependent. She needs someone to hold her hand. She needs someone to help her stand up and walk with her and hold her hands while she walks. She is dependent. She needs something in order to stand up to stand up, right? Alexia is dependent. Logan is independent. So we have these independent and dependent. Independent means you can stand alone. You don't need anything. Dependent needs a little help from its friends. It needs something added to it to help it stand up, to help it get by as a sentence, okay? A little more about dependent clauses. Some more information about dependent clauses. Independent clauses are pretty simple. They're, they're pretty self-explanatory. They stand alone. They become sentences. They're all in yeah, we're right. Aww. A little more about dependent clauses. Dependent clauses begin with subordinate conjunctions. There's a big phrase we will learn more about later. Subordinate conjunctions. Does anybody know what the word subordinate means? Subordinate? And don't for a second. Don't type it. No. No. Do you know what it means to be subordinate? No. Let me put it this way. I think that everyone in this classroom should be subordinate to right. me. No, Respectful. subordinate Respectful. to me. Respectful. 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 Respectful.
Like yeah. <laughs> Not helpful. Subordinate means a su subordinate means that you do as you are told. That you don't do anything unless somebody else tells you to do something. It's sort of like dependent. It's sort of like being dependent. So when you have something that depends on it, that begins with a subordinate clause, it's sort of like when you have the ones that begin with because. Because tells the rest of the sentence what it's going to do. So you have a subordinate conjunction. The other thing that dependent clauses do is they cannot be complete sentences without being attached to another independent clause. So you can't get, take two dependent clauses and stick them together. It still won't make a sentence. You can stick a dependent clause on the end of an independent clause. Just like my daughter, if you had another, if I had another little girl who couldn't walk, I couldn't oh. stick the two of them together and try and figure out if they were going to walk. Because they can't. Neither one of them can. But my daughter can grab a hold of my hand and walk because I'm an independent. I'm an independent clause. I can stand on my own. She can grab my hand and walk. She's actually grabbed a hold of my son's hand and walked. Well, she grabs onto his ear. <laughs> she has that weird thing with his ears. I don't know where it is. Take a picture. Oh, I, you have a video of it. It's hilarious. I'll show you guys later. Maybe so, you cannot stick. A, you cannot stick a dependent clause with a dependent clause in order to make a sentence. It has to be attached to an independent clause to make a sentence. Dependent clauses can act as nouns, adverbs, or adjectives. And so we have some examples. As a noun clause, I believe that you should go. So we're talking about a thing that you believe. I believe, and then there's a thing that you believe, and that thing is that you should go. It could be an adverb clause after the game. After the game. You need to add that to another independent clause, like, I went for ice cream. I went for ice cream is a sentence. You can leave it all by itself. It sounds fine. You can leave it alone. But the dependent clause after the game cannot. So you can add it to another independent clause, I went for ice cream. After the game, I went for ice cream. I went for ice cream after the game. Adjective clause. The book that I read. That I read describes the book. But you can't just say, that I read. It has a subject in it, it has a predicate, but it cannot stand alone as a sentence. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. That I read. Okay? Dependent clauses are also called subordinate clauses. It's another name for them. It means the same thing. Subordinate and dependent are very similar terms. Dependent means it relies on something. Subordinate basically means that it obeys something else. Still copying down? My wife is She's not. She's actually a robot I built in my garage right before I built the tree. I love the money. They're like the children. I'm a very talented Lego builder. All right, moving on. De dependent or independent? So we have another little game to play. We have our little spinny wheels of death. Yay. Yay. Of death. Oh, just, I like spinning wheels. Yeah, no, I'm no, working on it. No. I'm making them myself. It's like the Hunger Games. Spinning wheels of happiness. You. Yeah. Okay, so spinning wheels of the spinning wheels of clauses. Now, if you notice, once again in our little boxes, um, in our little boxes, you can't see uh, the sent the clauses very well. So you have to come up here and tap them to read what they say. So this one says, uh, even if I said so, even if I said so is what this one says. So even if I said so, that is your clause. And you need to figure out whether or not it's going into 
independent or dependent. So let's check the room for volunteers. Volunteers go. All right. Uh, since I started on this side of the room earlier, we'll start on this side. Julian, go ahead. Love Julian. Yeah. No, that's the second period. Yeah, I know. I want. So tap one and tell me what it says, and then. I danced until it was, or we danced until it was time to go. So is that an independent or dependent clause? Independent, right? You can say that. It's a sentence. It stands alone. It can be a sentence. Right? We danced until it was time to go. Jalen. Go, Jalen. I even told you guys to go on. I'm just like. What? We're going to go around. Like you guys really did. I'm taking volunteers. You're going to fight so. Oh, it's not an independent. So where does it go? Dependent. Even if I said so, it needs something else added to it to be a full sentence. Even if I said so, don't eat the chocolate cake. Hannah. Oh, I like chocolate. All right, quiet now. Which one do we have? Since you asked. Since you asked is dependent, right? It cannot stand alone as its own sentence. Since you asked. It cannot stand alone as its own sentence. There we go. Can I take yours? Yeah. That's good. <laughs> Who my who my father was? <laughs> yeah, can it? Do you think it can stand alone as a sentence? Does it sound right all by itself, or does it need something else added to it to make it sound right? If it needs something else added to it, it's dependent. And it's right, dependent. What is, what is something that we can add to that sentence to make it independent? An independent clause. Or a full sentence, I should say. What is something we can add to it to make it a full sentence, Jacqueline? You have to leave the, that wording alone. So you have to leave it as who my father was. But something you can add to it. No, then you're, you're changing it. You have to add something to it. You can say, I didn't know. You could add that, and that would make it a full sentence. All right, uh, Brooke, go right right next. Brooke, what one do you have, guys? Please stop talking. I am still hungry. Oh yeah, me too. Is an independent clause. Yes, you can say I am still hungry. Jacqueline, please grab one. So am I. Jacqueline, you can grab one. Yes. Oh yeah, that's a BFF. Guys, find out. That's a BFF. I don't. Shopping is fun. Shopping is fun. Is that independent or dependent? Independent, correct. You can leave that alone as a sentence. John, go grab one. What was it? I'm sorry, guys, there's too much talking going on. I couldn't hear what that was. What was it? She spoke, which is an independent clause. You can leave that alone all by itself. Uh, Raise go grab one. Guys. This is not a volleyball game, so please stop. Here. What one was it? He ran out of money. Independent or dependent? Independent, correct. It can stand alone by itself. Go. Although I ate pizza. 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 Although I ate pizza.
itself. It's dependent, right? You need to have more to it in order to understand it. Danny, you go over again? You go over again? You go on to this time? All right, Courtney, go ahead. Okay, hold on. 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 Okay, hold so you were there. You were there. Are you going to pick one or not? When it is lunchtime. When it is lunchtime. Is dependent. Correct. When it is lunchtime is dependent. Zach, go grab one. After we got to. Yeah, go to the library. After we go to the library, it's dependent. You need to add something to it after we go to the library. So we have a few left. I'm going to take these. Oh. All right, so let's, let's take a look at this one. Let's see here. Uh, because I ran hard yesterday, what are we putting that one? Because I ran hard yesterday. Is that independent or dependent? How many people say independent? How many people say dependent? It is. Dependent. Dependent. Yes. It doesn't make sense because I ran. Has anybody noticed any keywords? Has anybody noticed any keywords that will help tell you whether one's dependent or independent? Because, because will tell you if it is independent or dependent. It'll, because tells you almost immediately that it's dependent. That you bought at the zoo. That you bought at the zoo is it independent or dependent? Dependent. 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 You weren't there. You weren't there. Is it dependent or independent? How many people say dependent? How many people say independent? It is independent. Oh, you said you weren't there. It's a sentence. You can say that all by itself. Oh, I thought I was independent. Why? I thought you always said independent. Every parking spot was taken. Every parking spot was taken. Independent or dependent? How many people say dependent? Dependent. Independent. Independent. They ate. Last one. They ate. Dependent. Dependent. They ate. Independent. They ate. They ate. It's a sentence. You can say it by yourself. You don't need to know that. It's not necessary. It's not. It can stand alone. They is a subject. They is a subject. Ate is a predicate. You don't have to know what they ate. You just need to know that they ate. If my wife came home from, if my wife came home from work today and looked at me and said, "Did Logan and Alexia eat dinner?" I can say, "Yeah, they ate." I don't need to say anything else other than that. I don't need to tell her what they ate or when they ate. She's already asking the question what they ate. When they they ate. Did they eat dinner? Yeah, they ate. All right. So moving on. Practice. Not like that game. What was that? Now, so we've talked about the different types of pauses, and we've been able to tell the difference between the different types of pauses. Now we're going to get a little bit harder. We all look at the different whether one is a phrase or is it a clause. Somebody tell me what a phrase is. Somebody remind me what a phrase is. Exactly. Once again. A small group of words left All right. I do want you to add one, uh, two words to the end of that definition. If you have that definition written down in your in your notes, I want you to add two words to that. Or both. A phrase can also lack both a subject and a predicate. It's going to be missing either a subject or a predicate or both. Okay? 
but I want you to add that to, to this. Okay? Subject or predicate or both. Okay. It's a little bit, but not because it's clauses have subjects and predicates. So that's what you want to be paying attention to uh, when you are looking at the difference in these. So you're going to look at these phrases. You're going to click them again. Phrases or clauses. And you're going to determine whether or not it's a phrase or a clause. Okay. So uh, let's see. Where should we start? Oh, should we start? We've gone this way around, that way around. Middle. Let's go. Sorry, middle. I'm in the middle. Yeah. My jacket. All right, Jack, let's go. <laughs> you go, one. girl. You always give me right on the right eye. Do your cheers. Actually, I'm going to go this way around. Right. She was studying hard. Is that a phrase or a clause? Oh. Huh? No. It is a clause, right? It has both a subject and a predicate. Anybody else in the middle want to go? Anybody else in the middle want to go? Jayla. 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 No. Uh, you don't want to go, you don't want to go. That's fine. Anybody else in the middle want to go? I want to move out to the outside and nobody else in the middle wants to go. Alright. Uh, Brayden, go ahead and go. Um, Looking for phrases and clauses. From my friend. From my friend. Is that a phrase or a clause? Does it have a subject and a predicate? Or is it missing something? It is not a clause. It does not have a subject and a predicate. It has a subject, my friend, but there is no verb in that sentence. You should go back and forth on the side of that. Enrique. Oh, yeah, that's what I already planned on doing. Oh, you're smart. And I'm right smart. It's behind you. <laughs> After the game. Alright, guys, quite up. After the game, is after the game a phrase or a clause? It's a clause. Oh, yeah. I remember why. I'm getting better at this. I don't know why. How would you know if I'm supposed to be there? It was, there just wasn't a bird. Kevin. Yeah. In my opinion is a phrase. Right? Opinion would be a subject, but there's no predicate in that sentence. Anna. You go, girl. Okay. Good thing They ate. Once again, we just talked about that one. It is a clause. We just talked about that one. They ate is a clause. Okay. Now I want to. Yeah. I have a question. How much do you like Legos? No, I don't know. I'll answer your questions all over here. Guys, quiet down. I can't, I can't hear. If I can't hear, that means you can't hear. If you can't hear, you can't learn. What was it again? The big purple dinosaur. The big purple dinosaur. Oh, it's a phrase. Now, once again, look at the phrase, the big purple dinosaur. Is there a verb anywhere in there? No. Can you say what the big purple dinosaur did? No. no, then it's a phrase. Phrases are going to have... Oh, where are you going? Yeah, we're going middle again. John. <laughs> Studying hard. Studying hard. It has a verb, but it doesn't have a subject. Good. Huh? 
Did I did? I'm so sorry. What was it? She spoke. See, I can't hear because there's too many people talking. Once again, if I can't hear, you can't hear. Courtney. Courtney, just pick one and go with it. Since you were there. Since you were there. No. No. Oh, it is a clause. Since you were there, is a clause. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll finish up it next week. And then we'll move back to literature.
You and me, but no predicate. So it is a phrase. Have you missed hey you, have you misplaced something? I think your modifier may be dangling. Oops. Oops. <laughs> 
Oh, Alright, we're not gonna do this. Ah! Oh my goodness. Okay, so here we have. Um, these are 12 common errors in editing checklist. Okay, so I know these are going to be kind of hard to see, so I'm going to read them to you. These are the best misplaced and dangling modifiers of all time. So, does anybody know what a misplaced or dangling modifier is? Wait, what that is is all of these clauses that we just talked about, or especially the um, uh, some of the phrases that are either adjective or adverb phrases, they modify sentences. They change the way that we use it. We add phrases and clauses to sentences to modify them, to make changes. Well, sometimes we add them in the wrong places, or we leave them open-ended. If you leave them open-ended, it's called a, a, like a dangling modifiers. It means that you're not you're not really sure what it means. It could mean a couple of different things. If you put it in the wrong place, then you misplace it. And so it changes the way that the sentence sounds. Or it makes it sound a little bit odd. So here are some examples. Oozing slowly across the floor, Marvin watched the salad dressing. How should we have written that sentence to make it make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Here we have a misplaced modifier. It's put in the wrong place, and so it completely changes the sentence. Oozing slowly across the floor, Marvin watched the salad dressing. That sounds like Marvin or Martin is the one that's or Marvin is the one that's oozing across the floor, right? <laughs> Marvin's oozing across the floor, and while he's oozing across the floor, he's watching the salad dressing. Which is a very odd thing for someone to ooze and do. Waiting for the moon pie, the candy machine began to hum loudly. Waiting for the moon pie, the candy machine began to hum loudly. <laughs> Who was waiting for the moon pie? It seems odd. There's something missing. It just seems odd. Uh, number two, coming out of the market, the bananas fell on the pavement. Oh, poor bananas. Were the bananas the ones coming out of the market? No. No, there's like a, like bananas in pajamas. Has anybody ever, anybody ever seen that show? It's a really old show when I was a kid. When I was in like high when school. When I was a kid. But not when I was a kid. I was in high school. And it was a kid's show. And it was called Bananas in Pajamas. Like these two bananas, and they wore blue and white striped pajamas. We went on adventures. It's not like Nickelodeon or something like that. It was a very funny and very weird show, but it was very popular. Bananas in pajamas. So you have bananas walking out of the market, right? And then they slipped and fell on the floor. That's what that sentence sounds like it means. She handed out brownies to the children stored in Tupperware. <laughs> Who's stored in Tupperware? Children. The children are stored in Tupperware. Yes. Is that what they were trying to say? No. No. She handed the brownies were stored in the Tupperware, and she handed them out to the children. Um, I smelled the oysters coming down the stairs for dinner. Oh wow! <laughs> what? You smell the oysters as they were coming down the stairs for dinner. Uh, next one. I brushed my teeth after eating my Crest toothpaste. Oh, I'm sorry. I brushed my teeth after eating with Crest toothpaste. Crest toothpaste. All right, that makes it sound like you just ate some toothpaste and then went and brushed your teeth. No, it sounds like you're eating with someone. Oh, you're eating with Crest, Crest toothpaste. Like, here's my friend Crest toothpaste. So yeah. We're eating together. And then I'm gonna brush my teeth. I got you. Grocery shopping at Big Star. The lettuce was fresh. What? Grocery shopping at Big Star, the lettuce was fresh. Like Jewel. All right, uh, driving like a maniac, the deer was hit and killed. Was the deer, hit, was the deer was driving like a maniac? I'm pretty sure a deer would drive like a maniac. All right, we'll just do two more. With his tail held high, this is great. With his tail held high, my father led his prize poodle around the arena. <laughs> Apparently, and he held it high while he was leading his poodle around. Uh, last one I'll read. I don't like poodles. 
holding a bag of groceries. I'm oh, sorry. I saw the dead dog driving down the interstate. You saw the dead dog driving down the interstate. There's the dead dog driving a car. Probably a pickup truck. The very last one? Yeah, All right, all right. Okay. That's actually. There you go. Here's the last one. After drinking too much, the toilet kept moving. After drinking too much, the toilet kept moving. All right. Uh, let's see here. So this is what we're talking about when we, when we talk about the proper way to place our phrases and elements. When you our, our phrases and clauses. When you don't put them into a sentence properly, when you use them in the wrong spot, it can change the meaning of the sentence. And sometimes it changes the meaning in a completely different way than you intended. So we have to be careful in how we use our phrases and clauses. Okay. We have, I think, two screens left, so let's check out our last two. Okay. Random oh random group generator. Ooh, neat. I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna uh, what I'm gonna do is I want you to what I want you to do really quickly, uh, I want, I just want everybody to do it as individuals. We're gonna do it as groups because it take a little bit too long to get formatted in groups. What I want you to do is I want you to think of some of the examples that we just got done doing. I want you to think of some of the examples from our phrases and clauses that we used earlier. And I want you to really quickly, I want you to write three sentences that have misplaced uh, or dangling modifiers. Misplaced or dangling modifiers. So you're going to write three sentences that have either misplaced or dangling modifiers. Yeah, don't worry about the random group generator. Oh my gosh, you heard me. Huh? <laughs> so, oh my gosh, you heard me. That's your last Did anybody come up with one they want to share? 
No. about someone else. So, uh, you're, my, wa my dog watched as he drove. That sounds like the dog is driving and doing the watching at the same time. Right? So you put, you're, it's in the wrong spot. In the air they did cartwheels. In the air they did cartwheels. I think that's actually, that one's kind of okay. That one's kind of fine, all right. It's close. It feels like it means something else to make, make a mess up. But I don't know what this is. Bacon smells the boy. Bacon oh. smells the boy. <laughs> the boy smells the bacon is what it should be. Bacon smells the boy. Yep. Okay. Yeah. It's in the wrong spot. Misplaced. It's in the wrong spot. All right. Anybody else have another one? It's kind of hard to make them wrong on purpose, isn't it? Yeah. It's kind of hard to make them wrong on purpose because you want to make them right. You're used to being able to make them right. And now you make them wrong on purpose. It's kind of difficult. Okay. So, last one. <laughs> really quickly. Really quickly. In order for us to end this and not have to go back from the very beginning. I need somebody to tell me the difference between a phrase and a clause. If we cannot do this, we're going to go back to the very beginning and start all over again. Oh, what is the difference between a phrase and a clause? What is the difference between a phrase and a clause? Julia, what is it? Um, a phrase is missing a subject or predicate or both, and a clause has both. Correct. A phrase is missing a subject or a predicate or both, whereas a clause has both a subject and a predicate. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, the same question that we have to pass in order to get out of here, in order to move on and do something else. Woo! What is the difference between a dependent and an independent clause? A dependent and an independent clause. Braden. Uh, a dependent clause is a clause that is dependent on the itself. So it needs something else to make it a whole uh, statement, and then an independent clause can be by itself and it can make it Okay, excellent. A dependent clause needs something else to help it stand by it to stand up. It needs an independent clause to help it stand. A independent clause doesn't need anything. It can stand alone as a sentence. It's fine. Finally, last one. What does it mean to for a modifier to be dangling or misplaced? What do we mean by that? Dangling or misplaced? Jalen? Like it's in the wrong order. It's in the wrong order or what else? It's in the wrong order would mean misplaced. 
Ready? All right. When we talk about dangling, we mean it leaves the, the phrase open ended. You don't know who it's about or what it's about. Okay? So it's either in the wrong place or it leaves it open ended. We're not sure exactly what it's about. All right, awesome. Now we can move on. We can go back. We can get out of here. All right. So please put that away. Okay, we're going to go back and talk about Ricky Tiki Tavi just for a little bit. Uh, we don't have a whole lot of time left in class, so I want you to try and remember what you can because I want to talk, go back and talk about cause and effect a little bit more. Or, I'm sorry, bias a little more. So we talked, we talked the other day, if you guys remember. Okay. So once again, uh, we talked the other day. We talked about um, we talked about the elements. Of, we looked at the elements of being. Um, Ah, uh, wait. Objective, thank you. All my brain was saying was opportunistic, which was wrong. Uh, it happens something. Being objective. We were looking at something, we were talking about being uh, uh, biased versus being objective. And we looked at the checklist for things that make something objective, right? Yeah. And we said that we went over three on the story of Ricky Chicky Tabby as it appeared as we talk about. The uh, as we talk about the snakes and Ricky King Tavi. So let's check our, our bias checklist and see if we can see any, if there were some of the things that made us biased. So one of the first things that we talked about was selective reporting as practice. Selective reporting means we only talk about certain things about a particular topic. Did they only mention certain aspects of the snakes yeah. when we were in the story? What kind of things do they talk about? Okay. How they eat, they try to kill your babies and try to, they try to eat, bite humans and well, they need to stop people. Okay, and what do they not talk about? What do they choose not to talk about? Okay. How many, like, what, how many people you have you do from me too? Okay, they, they, that was one of the things they didn't talk about. What else do they not talk about? Really? They didn't talk about how snakes actually help people. Right, they didn't talk about how snakes actually help people by killing rodents and keeping things, areas disease free. They didn't talk about those kinds of things either. So there are things that they talked about, so they practiced selective reporting. They only talked about one side of things. They didn't talk about everything. So they didn't talk about the pros and the cons. They only talked about the cons. So next one. A judgmental opinion on a comment is stated. Was there a judgmental opinion given about the snakes? Yeah. Yes. What were some of the judgmental opinions that they've given about the snakes? Yeah. Horrid. Horrid was one of the words we talked about. Great. Cowardly. Cowardly. John. Cold hearted. Cold hearted. Now technically they're reptiles, so they are cold hearted anyway. Wicked. Evil, right? They used all those terms talking about it. those are opinion terms. Right? Those are opinions. It talks about the author's opinion. Lastly, propaganda is used. Did they try and convince you that the snakes were evil or bad? Did they try and spend a lot of time convincing you of that? Yes. Yeah, they did. Now, for our story, was that important? Is that a good thing that they did that? Yes, it is a good thing. Otherwise, it would be a pretty boring story. If you don't have a hero and a villain, villain, oh, it's a pretty boring story, right? Mm -hmm. So I know I had you guys write about it a little bit, but I don't necessarily know if we talked about it too much. I don't remember if we talked about it too much. So I think we're pretty safe in saying that 
our story was rather biased against the snakes. Yep. Right? So, why was the author so biased against the snakes? Why do we think that the author was so biased against the snakes? I know we did it in our journal, but I don't think we really talked about it. Why do you think the author was so biased against the snakes? He probably had a phobia for snakes. We call, we talked about where he grew where he grew up, right? Yeah. In India, right? Yeah. Are there a lot of snakes in India? Yeah. Sure. That's where these particular snakes come from. So what did they Maybe he had a bad experience. Like what? What do you think might be a bad experience with a snake yeah. in his childhood? Oh. Great. He could have been hit or his house could have been hit. Okay, maybe he got bit. Maybe there was a uh, cobra that got into his house. Maybe it was like the situation at that time. So maybe the story that he tells of the little boy sitting on the porch, maybe that was actually an experience that he had as a small child sitting on a porch and a cobra comes up on the, on the porch as he's eating. Maybe that was actually an experience of his. And so he's going to be afraid of the snakes, terrified of them. Jacqueline, what do you think? That, that kind of like the snake is still the snake, but the among them is like, like basically what he told his story about, it happened to him in real life. Okay. So maybe he, maybe they actually had like a pet mongoose in there in his life. So if he had like a personal experience where he had something negative, where he had a, a negative interaction with something like a snake, is it natural that he's then going to have a negative opinion of them for the rest of his life? Yeah. 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 And he's going to write about it. It's going to show up in his writing. Can any of you guys think of something that you feel like that you have that's your own thing like that? Something you like maybe when you were a little kid you had a dog that tried to bite you and now you're kind of afraid of dogs? Well, I didn't know if I knew that. Right. Even if it's in my neighborhood, there's this one guy. He lives downstairs. And he's like, 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 he's Right. The other dog attacked the dog, but like the same, the one kid, but I'm still been scared of really big dogs. There's a German shepherd. Right. That's a very, I know, I, that's, that's actually a very common experience. I, I have a couple of friends who have had a bad experience as a small child with a big dog and are now and forever will be afraid of dogs. Some of them are just afraid of all dogs. Some of them just don't feel comfortable around big dogs. Okay. Because there was a horniness on my fence in my old house and my dad was talking to a neighbor and like five of them bit me. So are you like afraid of mirrors now? Yeah. 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 Like, 
I've never actually heard of someone being attacked by a possum before. Also, yeah. kind of like too terrified of people, and they like play dead. That's, that's insane. I've never heard. You must have met the most weird evil possum people. Yeah, like the most evil possum ever. Yeah, I've seen evil possum ever. You must have met the most evil possum ever. Wow, it's like the most evil possum ever. I've never actually heard of Jack. smarter than people give them credit for. Um, but they're just they're kind of just they're just big, kind of lumbering, slow moving kind of animals, animals, right? Yeah. They just sort of eat and they're kinda of like babies, they yeah. eat poop and if you eat the poop and that's all they do. And you know, and they make really tasty burgers and you know and milkshakes and ice cream and so we like them and you know. But they uh, but they don't do yeah, this, they don't really do anything. It's not like they're a dangerous animal. Most people don't think of cows as being dangerous. But her jailer one decided to bite at her mom one day, and ever since then she's not liked them. It's not. Like, are you are you afraid of cows, or you just not like them? I just don't like them. Something about them just creeps me. Right. Okay. It's not necessarily that she's afraid of them. Did you eat them though? Yeah. No, 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 no. All right. So it's not necessarily that you have to be afraid of something. It may not be that the writer of our story was actually afraid of snakes, that something happened and made him afraid of snakes. It could just be that something happened and now he doesn't like snakes anymore. Maybe a snake, maybe he found one in his bed one night. He didn't fight him, it ran away, it didn't actually hurt him. Oh, Nothing like bad happened. But. Alright, alright, alright. Okay. But it's possible that maybe, maybe something happened that made him just not like them. He just didn't. Feel, I don't mean, know, you just didn't feel good about them anymore. Um, I don't know what it is. Uh, I had a, when I was, um, when I was much younger, much, much younger, <laughs> um, I don't, like, I don't, I can't really think of anything that I'm really freaked out about or that I really find to be um, evil. Or wrong in the world other than Ohio State fans. I decided to turn around. 
Don't be wrong with people who are Ohio State fans. I, I, don't, I don't know what it is. Um, it, and I think that most of it, I, sometimes maybe, maybe he didn't even have a bad experience with a snake. But maybe he had really good experiences with a mongoose. Maybe he had a pet mongoose. And so he knew a lot about mon the mongoose. And his mongoose used to hunt snakes. And he never had a problem with snakes. So snakes never were evil to him necessarily or bad. But he really, really liked mongoose. It's sort of like I jokingly talk about how horrible uh, Ohio State fans are. And about how horrible Cardinals fans are. And I do that only because, not because I actually have had any negative experience whatsoever with Ohio State fans or Cardinals fans. In fact, quite the opposite. The one time I went to a Cubs-Cardinals game was actually in St. Louis, and the Cardinals fans were some of the nicest people I've ever met. They were awesome. They actually invited us to come out with them after the game. So they told me I had to take off the Cubs jersey and do it, but I, they wanted me to come out with them after the game. Super, super nice people. Some of the nicest people I've ever met in a game. Um, and yet, I still talk about Cardinals fans terribly. And it's not because I have anything against Cardinals fans, really. It's because I love the Cubs so much. So maybe in his story, it's not so much that he hated snakes so much. But maybe it's that he loved the mongoose. Maybe he loved the mongoose. Maybe he had a pet mongoose that was a very close good friend of his, right? I always consider myself a dog person. I am a dog person. Yep. So Listen. because I'm a dog person, I feel like I have to make fun of cats. Yes, on a regular yes, basis. yes, yes. I have to. What is it? But to be completely honest, I had a cat when I was a kid. And it was a cool animal. Our Jasmine was cool. She was a, I, I liked her. Uh, my sister named her. I don't know. Um, I, um, my, um, uh, my, I have had friends who have had cats, and they are they can be very interesting, funny animals, and I don't mind them. But uh, because I like dogs, I feel as though I have to make fun of cats. Yep. Yes, I, do. I have to paint cats as being just don't a little screwed. True story. So maybe our author had the same thing. So sometimes we don't necessarily know where someone's bias comes from, but we can make a couple of assumptions about it. Maybe he had a bad experience with snakes. Maybe somebody he knew got bit. Maybe he was in a scary situation with snakes. But also, maybe it's not that he had a bad situation at all with snakes, but he loved mongoose so much. All right? Anybody have any questions over bias and uh, uh, why am I just reading my word? Objectiveness. Thank you. Objectivity. Why, anybody have any questions over object, uh, objectivity or bias? No. Okay. Uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow, 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 tomorrow. Same thing we do every day because we're trying to figure out the world. Uh, uh, next round of math testing is Tuesday. I double and triple checked it with um, with the calendar and with the office. It's next Tuesday. Uh, we'll be doing the math math testing. Okay. Why do we think math? Because, because it takes 15 minutes. It takes two periods. Take it over 15 minutes to take it, so it's longer than one period. And since language arts is the only block you have more than 50 minutes, it takes a lot. It takes a, top, a lot of time on my schedule sometimes, but it's not that annoying. Any other questions? Yes. What college student do I like? Michigan Wolverine. Yeah, I like each other. Let's see. Uh, Louisville, just they're awesome. All right. Uh, all right. I'll give you guys the last like three minutes before the all round. Yeah. Oh yeah. And then I have scars on my nose. Shut up. Oh yeah. Yeah. I hate stingrays because one time a guy he caught a stingray like when fishing and caught one. So I went I went swimming at the beach and then there's stingrays they they followed me and then I just swam all the way to the shore looking for the other stingray. It was weird. And then somehow the stingray that got caught was uh got off and went in the water and swam away with those two stingers. <laughs> it was really weird.